What's up guys, my name is Irina and welcome back to my channel where I review everything tech. Today we're gonna take a look at the Apple Watch Series 5, we'll talk about the battery life, the overall performance, all of its new features and also I'm gonna compare this new model to the previous one, the Apple Watch Series 4. And without further ado, let's get started! The first thing I wanna talk about is the unboxing experience. Just before I opened the box, I was wondering if there is something new and surprising inside, but no, same box, same items inside, as if you're opening the Series 4. You get the Apple Watch itself, by the way, this is a 44mm aluminum case in the gold color. Then you get a quick start guide, a magnetic charging cable, a USB power adapter and a band. So yeah, guys, this is pretty much the same unboxing experience, just like last year when I opened the box for the Apple Watch Series 4, but I have to admit that every time I open a new box with a new device, it always feels so good. You know what I'm talking about. So this is the Apple Watch Series 4 and this is the Series 5. These are both cellular models. And speaking of design, I would say they look absolutely identical to me. In fact, when both of them are turned off, you can only tell the new model from the old by looking at a small print on the back. As you can see, these are both 44mm aluminum cases in space grey and gold. They have practically the same weight. However, when it comes to the new Apple Watch Series 5, you can choose from a wider variety of case materials, like titanium and ceramic, if you go for the cellular version. And speaking of what is new about the Apple Watch Series 5, one of the main features is the new always-on display. So now it's very easy to check your notifications or see the time without raising or tapping the display. I think I've wanted to have this feature on the Apple Watch ever since I've tried the Galaxy Watch from the Samsung. I like that always-on display feature gives you that feeling like you have a real watch on your wrist, so you don't have to do anything to see the time. The display dims when your wrist is down and returns to full brightness with a raise or a tap. Also, you can enable hide sensitive complications in the display settings. So when you push your wrist down, your personal information like messages, calendar appointments, reminders and I would say pretty much anything else, even calculator on your watch will be blurred. So you don't have to worry about your privacy. But guys, when it comes to how the display of the Series 5 compares to the Series 4, I noticed that the new display looks slightly dimmer, especially if you look at some photos. However, in your daily use, I don't think you're gonna pick up on this difference when interacting with your watch. The next new thing about the Apple Watch Series 5 is the upgrade in storage. The Series 5 comes with 32GB of storage over the Series 4's 16GB. And this actually could be a pretty significant upgrade for you if you listen to a ton of downloaded music, podcasts and audiobooks on your watch. The next new feature in the Series 5 is the built-in compass. Now we can see heading, incline, current elevation, latitude and longitude. If you're a fan of hiking, you'll probably like this feature. By the way, the compass will work even when you don't have Wi-Fi or a cellular connection, which is very convenient. So now you can add new compass complications to your watch face, just a direction at a glance if you need this. And the last new feature about the Apple Watch Series 5 is the international emergency calling. In the past, you could only make emergency calls from a cellular model Apple Watch if you were in the country where you actually bought the watch. With cellular models of the Series 5, the emergency calling feature works regardless of which country you're in. Also, international emergency calling works with fall detection if enabled. The Apple Watch will automatically place an emergency call if you stay motionless for about a minute after the hard fall was detected. And of course, if you often travel internationally, this is a very good feature to have for safety reasons. Now let's talk about the battery life. An all-day, 18-hour battery life is what Apple officially promises us, just like on the last year's model. And from my experience of using the watch moderately, when I do a 30-minute workout once every other day, with the display brightness set to medium, it usually lasts me a little bit longer than one day with always-on display enabled, and it lasts me more than two days when the always-on display is off. So yes, the always-on display definitely affects the battery life of the Apple Watch Series 5, but anyway, you still get more than 18 hours of use. When it comes to the Apple Watch Series 4, it also lasts me more than two days, just like the Series 5 with always-on display off. And I would say that the Series 5 and the Series 4 are pretty much on par in terms of battery life. 
I personally prefer to keep the always on display enabled. And guys, since I have to charge my watch pretty much every day, I was curious to see how long it would take to fully charge my Apple Watch Series 5. So here we have a 5 watt charger that comes in the box and let's begin. Let's make this test faster. And in 10 minutes of charging we get 14%. In 30 minutes we have 40%. In one hour we get 70%, in one hour and 30 minutes we have 98%, and it took one hour and 52 minutes to fully charge the new Apple Watch Series 5. Well, almost two hours. When it comes to overall performance, I honestly don't see any difference. Both of these devices are pretty fast and snappy, and I haven't experienced any lagging or freezing on either of these devices. So guys, I wouldn't say we have dramatic changes on the new Apple Watch Series 5. If you're currently using an Apple Watch Series 4 and none of these new features really impressed you that much, I think you should probably save your money and stick to your Series 4 until the next year's model. However, if you own a Series 3 or even early models, maybe this is the right time to make an upgrade. You'll get a new faster chip and even more helpful features like the ECG and fault detector. Guys, I'm really curious to know which smartwatch you are currently using, so hit me up in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you in the next one.